Welcome to Four Side Fights featuring Wills, not Mitch, Tafo, oh, Kirby Kaze, and then Tafo. <laughs> Says it's a foresight. I'm Jack Zilla, and I know number one, Baldur's Gate is all I know now. Uh, goodbye, Melee. Number two, if it wasn't for last episode of Foresight, Zane would not have had the courage to twit longer Cody Schwab's controller. Number three, I may have weaponized anti colorblind ableism to defeat Cody Schwab, but it was justified to prevent further bad discourse. And number four, did I mention Baldur's Gate? Let's go to each side. What is your favorite class to play in role playing games? Uh, let's start with, uh, they can operate heavy machinery. Uh, welcome back, Wills. I am definitely forklift certified, but please don't ask OSHA about it. Um, I like to play the wild magic sorcerer. It's the most similar thing to Peach. I kind of just like to RNG my way into victory. Had, had like a, a storm of bees explode last round. I'm in act three. Like yeah. anything could happen. And I'm just kind of, just kind of roll with it. You like to hurt yourself in your confusion. Uh, up next, my partner in live stream at the big house. It's not Mitch. What's up, Jack? The only class I'm worried about is class solidarity. Uh, top players <laughs> just have too much power, and that's all I got to say. Okay, the, uh, speaking of class solidarity, it's the landlord of our YouTube channel who has not been asking why all of our videos are demonetized for copyright infringement. It's Tafokins. Hey, what's up? Um, I'm an archer kind of person. I like to attack from a distance, um, rack up that DPS, be on top mm -hmm. of the damage charts. Yeah, that's my style. Yeah, you play to carry. And finally, Sheik and Ness Legend, the first Canadian to be sponsored by Melee on Me and the coach to Modern Melee Champions. It's Kirby Kaze. How are you doing, KK? I'm doing pretty good. I'm thinking about what I, what care no what class I'd want to play. I think I'd pick Warlock though, because I like the thought of being powerful, but we're all in it together. <laughs> yeah, and Warlock definitely has to uh, manage relationships, right? A Warlock has uh -huh. their uh, devil patron that they usually have to deal with. Exactly. Uh, welcome to Four Side Fights. We've got four outstanding guests today who are going to act as pundits as I throw topic after topic at them. They'll give their takes. If they're entertaining or interesting, I'll give them points. If they're boring, repetitive, or patently unreasonable, I'll subtract points. And of course, I can mute any contestant at any time for any reason. The player with the most points at the end is our winner. They get to commentate the three losers as they take it to Four Side in a free-for-all to see exactly how their punditry translates to melee. This Wait, one step, why do I have negative three already? Uh, you were yeah, late. Can I, uh, to the can call I get my time. points? Can I get my points back? Wills, you were. Uh, you did we not. Won, you we did won. We won the, the A round that was Jack, coming at me, Jack, and you had we, full health. Give me my uh, this episode back. is an experiment. Can I get some points gonna... for being the saving grace. Yeah, yeah, maybe, no. maybe. This is crazy. I didn't even get to the part I need to tell the audience, which is that we're gonna do an experiment this episode, which is trying to run it faster, uh, a little bit closer to the Tony Reale method of twenty-minute, thirty-minute episodes. We're gonna see if we can do it. Uh, see if we can keep uh, Smash players from from talking too much, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna succeed based on this so far. Let's get started. We don't have a blur first... here. Oh my god. Let's get started with our first topic. Yeah, he he he, he you've had a little bit of that curse uh, uh, in whatever you're rolling. Uh, Zane wins collision, bringing his win streak to two going into Battle of BC. Uh, Zane has not missed a major top eight since Genesis 6 in 2019. Uh, this tournament also <laughs> featured a resurgent H-Box who defeated Cody by playing what he called, quote, the best 20 seconds of melee in his life, and what Cody called, quote, me being absolutely shit for 20 seconds. Was H-Box's performance a fluke or the future? We'll start with uh, Tafo, since you got a lot on your mind. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think uh, the big thing that we've all seen, and I think he's talked about it, and we all know, is just like him working with Mita King and actually learning the game, which is kind of appalling to say how, considering how good he's been for the past, like, you know, 15 ish years, for him to finally go, oh, yeah, I should probably study situations um, as yeah. a head stretcher. But it's such a low hanging fruit that I really do believe it's um, indica indicative of him improving in the future. KK, what do you think? It's hard to say, but I think I lean towards Tafo. Um, the biggest thing that I noticed is he was just playing for more reasonable win conditions. Um, like the light shield hogs that he did versus in the Marth matchup were really good. Um, like the advanced Marth killer stuff. I think that that, if he figures out that, no, that side of it, um, yeah, he might be here to stay. We might see like H, H God come back. Ooh, a full comeback or at least getting top threes, right? Juan is really good. You guys have whole, you, you believe in <laughs> so good. You believe in the golden resurgence, like a full 2018, 2019? 
I think he be. I think he can get to the conversation. It just depends on how much he wants to put into it. But yeah, okay. when he plays to the right, when he plays for keeps, he like you can't beat him on stamina. You can't like wear him down. That's yeah. kind of his thing. So if he's also playing for the right win conditions in those circumstances, yeah, he's terrifying. He's got energy reserves. Uh, not Mitch. What do you think? I don't know. I I'm not super convinced. Uh, we always talked about when he started learning reaction tech chase arrest, like this is going to be the time, this is it, but it still wasn't. And last year it seemed to be the, the method was just get to top eight, make sure I'm on the stage and then out of there. But I'm, I just want to see more. I just want to mm -hmm. see more. Yeah. Wills. H bone has never not had control of when he loses, but he did note that M2K, while helping him build a pyramid, did not coach him against Cody. So until I meet that coach, I'm not sure this wasn't more than just a fluke. And he wasn't just like doing random oh, so things this, he picked up. Wait, he, he, you don't think Mewtwo King had any impact at all on this like last set, just on the timeline? Well, HBox said M2K, did not, oh, M2K was like, I did not coach him specifically against Cody. And I think oh, meeting Cody is clear. Against, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, Cody's necessary to winning these tournaments. And we double eliminated him here. And I can't figure out why. I don't know who coached him. I don't know what whispered in his head. Yeah. But he could have just worked on the Fox matchup more broadly. That could just mean we didn't look at Cody's habits, though. Well, if you can beat Cody just by looking at the Fox matchup broadly, that's pretty good news for, uh, for, for Hungrybox, I think, um, to put him back in the, in the game. Let's move on to our next topic. Uh, last episode, we talked about there was a topic of how long is JMook's win streak going to last in SoCal and Los Angeles? And everybody, all of his top player co cohorts were like, he can last as long as he needs to. He could make it a million years and never lose in SoCal. He lost that same week. Uh, then in the first round of Division One, the new SoCal Star League recurring series, uh, in the first round of that tournament, Fiction beat Asphat and Mango and Magi to win the first round out outright. So now Fiction has his Verdugo crazy win streak, Asphat, Mango, Magi, Jmook all defeated in SoCal. Uh, with this resurgence of stacked locals, is it time to buy Fiction stock? Or who else is impressing you in SoCal? Has anyone here not bought Fiction stock? Has anyone sold Fiction stock at some point? <laughs> well, that's like, an, yeah, that's, that's, like, that's, like that's like selling. I sold stock. That's like selling Amazon. Like, what are you doing? You you doubted? Are there I mean, people who is doubting Shepard Lima? I'm not sure I've ever had much confidence in Shepard Lima. Like I don't I don't know why you said that. Because I'm a hater, and so yeah, Mitch like, does not have access to see Fiction's tweets. Uh, so there's probably a lot of context missing. <laughs> you know, there was a riff between us about a straight dog a long time ago, but that's that's in the past. A straight um, dog or a straight dog. We don't need to ask questions. Um, so <laughs> fiction as a player is someone who like bounces around between things that he it feels like he is accomplishing or wants to accomplish, but it never kind of gets wrapped up. And so he can win a lot of SoCal tournaments and he, he probably win will win a couple of them, but I don't think he's gonna be the cream mm -hmm. that rises to the top in this era of SoCal. I kind of see what you're coming from because he is pretty formulaic with his play style. Like there's kind of like when he's playing Falco, it's basically like laser initiation, laser initiation, laser initiation, make sure it's set up. But then like players were calling that out pretty regularly. And that was kind of like the general understood thing. If Shepard's better than you, then like, yeah, he gets you every time. But like, if you know the method, then he just doesn't, you know, he doesn't, doesn't crack it. So I guess the real question here is like, can these, you know, can they figure out the method to beating this, you know, what he, whatever he's doing differently? And if so, um, does he bounce back? Because I, mm, like, whenever you can, whenever you commit, like, really, really hard to perfecting a specific right. strategy, you, that thing better be good. Um, and he's very diligent, but I just, I don't know. Need more. Need more data. Yeah, it's just one tournament. Local reporter. Mm -hmm. I think my think? my baby was crying at the idea of me buying fiction stock because it's not good anywhere else in the world. I think the only way this would work out for the baby is if we pretended and we remap every venue to look like Vertigo. Until then, the well, baby's going to cry in disapproval. Is that not what Aiden is doing with the SoCal Star League? <laughs> Maybe that's his yeah, whole issue. Yeah, but Battle BC and Jess is in Big House and all his events are not in SoCal. So we have to kind of drug up fiction to pretend that it's SoCal. And then maybe he'll win. Is that considered a performance enhancer? It is. I I feel like interior design is not a PED, if I had to guess. We can definitely make a couple vertigos. Like yeah, box, you, box, box, box off of set another the major. tournament series, vertigo outside, does fiction still win? 
without a doubt. If you <laughs> name the Vertigo, he's there to take it. Verdugo new lands about to pop as soon, off. As soon as he hears about it, he, he's on the plane. Like if I, if I had Verdugo in Chicago, Fiction's there. This is I know, and I don't even have to ask him. He'll be there. So is this like a prescriptive approach? Like we're starting from a premise of like, as long as it's named Verdugo, Fiction will dominate. Because like, we could make that happen. Like we just need to, yeah. We could make Fiction the best player if we wanted to, by that logic. Yeah. Fiction has to believe it's Verdugo, though. It's, there's no way it's just name alone. There's got to be alcohol add, and noise. What is the essence of Verdugo? <laughs> you, have to, you might as well not bring Salami What with is you. the identity? I'm going to uh, push to, for the second part of this question, which was just generally, uh, who else is impressing you in SoCal with the, uh, the SoCal Star League returning or just in general? I feel like this region has suddenly gotten so many locals that are really well attended. Um, that that looks to be a really good uh, place to to see people coming up. Ringler, like the fa like I know he's Division Two, I think, but like I was I thought he was just like a meme, and then I saw him playing like get and get like second the first week or something. I was just like, wow, this guy's really good, like really really good. He just he doesn't drop things. He does good cheese. Like he has good basics. Like wow, monkeys. Like who knew? Yeah. DK DK Renaissance continuing. I'm most impressed by Mango because he's actually going to locals. And I think that's the largest skill gap that you can have at a local. That is crazy. Is never showing up to actually going and playing. I don't care if he loses. The fact that he even showed up is a massive improvement. I, and they say half the battle is showing up, right? Yeah. See, I think the problem is I don't think he cares if he loses either. <laughs> um, but, yeah. I gotta say, I'm, I'm pretty not. impressed with SFAT. I was, I was not... I didn't have high hopes for him coming into this. And the other night when I was watching, I saw him play a lot of close sets, a lot of good sets. And like the, it doesn't feel like he's super caught up with everything yet, but it seems like the stuff he's got, his bag of tricks and his, I don't know. It seems like he's committed to growing as a player anyways. Like I, I have high hopes for him coming the rest of the yeah, year. Yeah, the friendlies he's at friendly NVIDIA year. are keeping all those players sharp. All those pretend retired players are coming right. back and then still doing amazing. All right, let's move on to our next topic. There is a growing discussion about how modern melee majors and large tournaments are a bit different from the previous era. Smaller, uh, a higher average age, uh, harder to get as many top 50 players, but maybe easier to get top 10 players. Pat's House 4 is shaping up to be a pretty good example of this. They're going to snag multiple top 10 players, but probably end up with fewer top 100 players than Pat's House 3. Uh, between our four pundits, we have just about 50-ish years of activity in the melee scene, stretching back to 2008. What are the biggest differences you've seen in tournaments across each era as you've gone through them? Oh, Lord. <laughs> um, so I guess the first thing is there's... You can just get... I think one of the things that's very discouraging sometimes is when you just get your bracket destroyed by, like, you no, know, by a match of draw. That's something that didn't really happen back in the day to nearly the same degree as it happens now just because you had round-robin rounds, right? So, like... With round robin pools, you were kind of like filtered through more like there's just more input into the system. So you have your testing consistency like way more over more sets. So yeah, you just play more games. You have and I think there was something really rewarding about getting to round three pools at like a pound four or something, and then every single match is fire. Like I, I think that mine was I was a first seed going into that, and mine was me, Drefin, Trail, Ua, Lovage, and mm -hmm. Reno. And it's like, yeah, every single game is like super sick. It's so enjoyable. And if, yeah, it was kind of like a, if you made it into like bracket at a tournament like that, it was basically understood you were good. Cause how could you not be? There was no question of like, cause you couldn't really get like a lucky bracket of just spaces because there's just so many more, like there's just so many more games. Yeah. Like you're going to get that peach player. So yeah, I would say that that's a huge difference. So now it's riptide pools. If you get out of those, you still have that old round robin credibility. Mm -hmm. That is the only tournament I've ever made it to a day two uh, in like a three day tournament where I was in singles was uh, was with round robin pools. Now that I think about it, but I haven't really been entering in a very long yeah. time. Napo, what do you think? What are the changes? So I think there's like two big things for me. Like if you went to Genesis 1 or like anything pre-Smash GG, the whole for day 1 or day 0 was spent collecting money and then making pools. So like, you would come there for a full day, pay your money, and then you wouldn't have your bracket. So you would have to spend an extra day and everything was cramped within like the like Saturday and Sunday, but you still had to show up on Friday. So everything is much more streamlined. 
and the fact that like you could see matches like you didn't have to get the zoo seat like if you saw Silent Inspector versus Armada unless you were there within the first like two minutes you weren't able to watch the match and yeah. so I think there's a lot of conveniences that I think people underrate when they kind of have the nostalgia goggles and say back then it was so much better but there's so much things that are just better today that I'm thankful for that infrastructure has bought in Wells what do you think be able to... yeah I never mind I think scheduling is a lot better. Like once we finally made it towards like actually like like Taffo said, like handling real tournament formats on Friday, like handling doubles, my my two hours in the security line at Genesis, which that got that ended up on a Saturday too. Like we I handle a lot of waiting. But I, I do think security's changed up a lot. I feel like you could walk in with anything, be anywhere, be on any setup, and now I'm always being checked on like anywhere I'm at where I'm getting the practice. I think the biggest difference for me is less an in-person one and more of like an emotional one in that back in the day, and obviously this kind of goes for every bit of Melee, but back in the day it felt like way more on a knife's edge in that one, we weren't going to see each other for another couple months or however long, and two, this might just be the last tournament because we don't have any more money left. And so now it might be the last tournament for other reasons, but it feels like more consistency is great but it also like I don't know. It takes the uh, it takes some of that heart out where it's like I don't know if I'm gonna see tomorrow. So I gotta I gotta work for it today. But that's that's kind of out there. Can I will add other thoughts. Sorry. <laughs> um, I will add one more thing though. Like I think the one thing, and this isn't to, like it's just a fact of the matter thing. I think the one thing the old days had was the like kind of the awe and wonder of what was gonna happen, and I think. When we look at old tournaments, like you go, this player from this region, Silent Spectre, Dark Rain, or Scar, like who's better of the three? Like we don't know because we've never played. So I think there was a lot of the mystery and wonder of the old days that I do kind of miss. But the byproduct of that is that we're seeing a lot more people interact and play against each other that now we know like what is very likely going to happen. But the one thing I do miss is the kind of the, mon- the wonder and the mystery of, you know, what was going to happen at the tournament. I'd also say sense of community. Um, Like, I remember when we did, in, like, the pre-streaming era, when we had um, Genesis 1, Genesis when Armada came over, and we didn't really have, we didn't have um, Twitch. We didn't have, like, a way to broadcast the matches, so we just had, like, an update thread, and you had to refresh it, and people were, like, diligently providing the results in real time, just so that the people at home who couldn't be there could know what the heck was going on at, like, one, one of the biggest upset of... The year of like ever right um and like i i feel like something like that it just doesn't really happen in the same way and if it does happen it's usually for cloud chasing or points so i think that's I kind love of the chasing miss. Cloud. i feel I like the biggest on, diff- <laughs> go ahead i just want to say thought, that thought. Uh, yeah on the on the community point the the smaller events you get to feel that a lot more like smash camps and things like that that's great but the bigger tournaments it's just hard with that many people but the uh the uh the thing you just spoke on I, I'm just, I'm happy and I benefited off this, I guess. But like, I was really proud of Jack for doing the streams at the majors the last couple times because it it gave me that sense again, just chasing around matches and like feeling part of the like just part of the big living organism that is the Smash scene. It was something I hadn't felt in a long time, and it was it was really really fun. Yeah, I think it's kind of back. I think that uh, I, when I was first going to tournaments, there was this electric feeling of like we're building something that shouldn't be here by all rights. And then we kind of got into this sense of like, oh, we should be here and we're going to be here and esports is is here to stay. And then it all blew up. And now we're kind of back to this. I, I find there's there's a, a resurgence and a kind of subversive feeling at events where it's us against the world. And I've really been enjoying that in the past couple of years, even though this these past couple of weeks, I've only been thinking about Baldur's Gate. Let's move on to our next topic. Melee has a plethora of legendary coaches, Cactuar, Drug Fox, Crunch, G Money, and our pundit KK with us who is currently coaching all sorts of players behind the scenes. Uh, how should players judge the effectiveness of coaches? What's the difference between a fraud coach and a useful one? And what's your approach to coaching or being coached? So is this just me start? like giving my emoji? Okay, okay, secret? yeah, go for it. You start. <laughs> give, give me, what's your, what's your modus operandi? Ah. Uh... So I usually start by trying to figure out like what the player's strengths are and what their understanding of the game is. And then from there, you want to build out uh, what their holes... Like, you want to like assess uh, for and hypothesize where the holes in their play would be. 
um, then we evaluate that. Like we take a look at their matches, we see them play live, whatever works really. Um, and I think that something that we get that a lot of coaches get wrong is they'll see like stylistic choices that are in there that the player feels very passionate about or very, very strongly about. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to work with that. They want to kind of just turn them into cookie cutter fox or whatever character they play. And I think that that, is, that does a disservice because a lot of the times the unique strengths that those players have stem from their willingness to invest in those stylistic choices. And if you don't nurture them or at least respect them, then you can, they cannot trust you because you don't aren't willing to understand how they got here. That sounds a lot like the kind of challenge that you might have had, Taffo, when you were, uh, when you were in Coach Taffo era. Yeah, I think a large part, again, I think KK has um, a way of uh, attracting a certain type of player that is willing to listen to kind of like feedback. And I think the synergy is really good for him. I think it really, when you look at a relationship between coach and player, it also comes down to like the agreements that the coach and player wants. Like Mango is very stubborn, which everyone knows. And so I had to pick and choose my battles and how I would bring concepts to him. And I found that I was going to get more mileage in fixing his term and day routine. So I focused more on like getting him into the right mental state and prepping him, like eating habits, food, rest, warm up time, scheduling, so that he could just focus on the game. And I think that's important too. And I think a lot of times people misconstrue coaching as in like, because a lot of people were trying to backseat coach on behalf of Mango. They're like, Tell Mingo to do these six things, and like you might be the most backseated coach in the history of esports between multiple games. <laughs> no kidding. So I think, in short, just to kind of wrap up the thoughts, like I think different players want different things, and the effectiveness is like what the players willing to do and not do, and working around that so that you can maximize the improvement that they're willing to do. All right, Wills and Mitch, I I, I don't know if y'all have been coaches for others or, but this might be a, a time to lean on the being coached uh, if you've had that experience. My main experience in coaching other people is just like making fun of Free Palestine as much as I can for his bad edge guards. But mm -hmm. in terms of like what you asked, like what makes a good coach, what makes a bad coach, I think the stuff Tafo said with the out of game stuff is super, super important. Make sure you're as ready to play melee as possible when you it's your time to play melee. But then also that covering up the holes thing is really important in that the further someone raises their floor, I think that's like all a testament to their coach because that's never stuff you want to work on by yourself. It a lot yeah. of times takes motivation to work on the stuff you're shit at. And so I, that's that's the thing I look for first when I somebody's coaching. Yeah. Wills? Yeah, I definitely think it benefits like when you're being coached that your coach has enough experience with other personalities to know after associating with you, like what would help you moving along this path, like how you should talk to them, whether you should just tell them straight up you're sucking against Puff right now. Just you have to communicate a certain honesty between your coach and your player. And I think the level at which you can say that just depends on who you're talking to at the point. Yeah. I feel like I benefit from like having like a whole like committee of people, a whole bunch of different personalities. Cause I like, if I'm getting coaching from Phil, uh, something I, that rings in my brain from Phil is I was double jumping too much as Fox and he just paused, pointed at me and he said, what are you doing there? What are you doing up there? He's over there. What are you doing up there? But I think as I reflect on it, that if I got like just made fun of for like hours and hours at a time, I probably would be too sad to uh, internalize it. Maybe shame is a good motivator, but I feel like you want a mix of approaches. It, it's fine. It's fine to just like yell why at somebody sometimes. <laughs> if you're just so perplexed, just, just, just like yell it out. I did ask Will Pickles to, to neg me as a form of coaching while I was playing Fox. And it was, it got very, it got too real too fast. <laughs> uh, it suddenly, I, I thought he was saying things that, that still haunt me at, at uh, in my dreams. Jack taking, uh, Jack taking notes from Will here yeah, like, coach is in a much similar fashion it was a scary he's like aren't you fox aren't you supposed to hit your chain grabs not drop them and uh i, I knew that but it still didn't feel good <laughs> you uh do damage i asked for it i asked for it let's move on to our next topic battle of bc preview uh battle of the bc seating has seen some controversy with mango and zane declaring it shit and cody declaring it all right uh, Amsa was seated to c play, I think, Cody and Moki and is crying softly, wondering what he ever did to make Canada betray him. Uh, but Cody made the argument that 
players whose goal it is to win a tournament should virtually never care about seeding. They should be ready to beat anyone. Uh, let's talk Battle BC. What's your dream result for the tournament? What do you think is actually going to happen? And is the seeding whack? How is Moki below Amsa? Houseway. No, for real. Like that, that's like, what? Amsa seeded to beat Moki? That's yeah. funny. Since when? All the quarters look like clear one way streets, too. No, yeah, they, I, I think don't get it. It's rigged. It's rigged. It's rigged without an For ounce viewership. of hype, though. Like I don't. Yeah. This is not yeah. the, the viewer is not saying right, let me get Jmook H box and let me get Amsamoki. I feel like I've never asked for Amsamoki after like after the first time. I think I was out. Yeah, I, I think asked that again. It, but like, yeah, this, I know it's whack as heck. This kind of reminds me of um, when we did uh, the online like slip uh, summit league, where like people got to pick their opponents, and like you kind of got these situations where it's like ninety five five matchups. Like, it feels like this again. Maybe it's not that lopsided. I think the difficult part here for me to, like, think, right, like, if you went strict seeding every tournament and, like, the seeds didn't really change and people played to their seed, then you get the same matches over and over again. So I'm wondering, I'm giving some benefit of the doubt here to say maybe they shuffled and put people within tiers and RNG'd it. But, yeah, it does look very strange. And without explanation, I'm scratching my head on it. So it's like bizarre a... and doesn't generate hype. I don't there... see the benefit. I was always a proponent of the the tiered Sorry. seating with like just random shuffling because I think yeah. that is a good way to mix up the matchups. But if you're going to do that, then you can also just, you know, shine them up a little bit after the fact. Like you're the TOs. You can do whatever you want. At the end of the day, all that's going to happen is people are going to complain on Twitter and then still show up and to the tournament and make a paycheck. On side fights. Right. Yeah. Wills, what do you think? It's, it's understood similarly in Prohibition. Like... <laughs> You have to rig it for your boys a little bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Why? You got to rig it for your boys a little bit. Like, that's just like, you're not going to say it. You're not going to say it like at the tournament. You're not going to say it before the tournament. Someone might look you in the eyes during the rotation and ask you about it and you'll, you'll glance slyly. But maybe always, some more Americans should have gotten passports. Is you what you're all, saying. Maybe, maybe. But what, what I'm seeing from the Canadians is not love. They, like, <laughs> them doing the Stamoki, heartless. Like, I, yeah. I, feel, I feel betrayed culturally. Watching Moki get done like this. You're defending. I'm not Canadian. I'm not Canadian though. Don't assume that. I'm... Okay. Okay. I don't know. I feel like giving Moki Amsa is like a pretty good gift to Moki. I, say, Moki. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how it could get better for for, for Moki yeah. besides that. He wants to go higher. He, if he's already he's ranked above, it's a great way to do it to have an easy winner's quarters. Uh, the other two parts of the question: What's your dream result for the tournament, and what do you think is actually going to happen? Leffen. Leffen is your dream. Leffen, 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 yeah. Joshman, Grand, I, Leffen, 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 Josh Leffen, Josh Grand, Josh Josh Grand. <laughs> Leffen, Joshman, Grand, but Josh for some reason plays at least two games of Marth and gets a bracket reset. Yeah, why not? Love the imagination. Let's paint with all the colors of the wind, baby. I want to see that. No, 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 keep it a box to though. We can do more. Leffen's got to yeah. shoot too. I know. I'm saying counter pick battle. We just they're just. It's not even. I don't know what the setup's gonna be, but I hope they're on the same setup and they're just talking shit. Um, and then what's actually going to happen? It's going to, I mean, you know, it's going to be Zane versus Cody Schwab. Grandpa. Okay. Yeah, okay. Do you want to hear my dream? Yes. Um, yes, um, set goes like, I have no demons beats Moki beats Cody. Um, I don't know beats Zane and then Cody in grand finals. And then Plup comes out of nowhere. And then he three O's him and says, what's that 26 game win thing you had the other time. That doesn't mean anything. And then he just conquers all his demons. That's amazing. Great fan talking. fiction there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's actually gonna happen? Uh, Cody's gonna win. Oh, you're you're thinking no. everything that's Cody. Uh, the return to power collision is an aberration. Yes. Okay. KK, what's your prediction? I mean, what I want to happen is I want Moki to win. Like, I think that I'm, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, if not Moki, then yeah, I think J Mook's going right. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know. One of the two. You got a conflict but... of interest. Yeah, it's hard because I love them both so much, and like one of them's a sheik, the other's a Canadian. It's just hard. Like my heart. <laughs> Very equal cool thing. Which kid like. do you love more right now? Hey, a Moki. Yeah. Sheik's not okay. Hey, most parents Moki, are not so forthright. I, you know, uh, it's just I haven't seen him in one. a little bit. That's all. That's yeah, it. yeah, yeah. And he hasn't won one exactly, right? So all I, right, I love, let's I love I'm waiting for Moki to get his one. 
Yeah, let's move on to our next topic. I got in an argument with my friend Elemental Penguin on Discord DMs, which he summarized as Jack thinks Icy's are better than Falco. For the record, I don't believe that, but I am part of a growing movement designed to wake up Falco sheeple from their immense cope. Where do you put Falco in the current meta, and what needs to change to either get him to win a major or get people to switch to better characters? If for people to switch off Falco, he has to be less cool, so that's just simply never going to happen. There's oh. always that glimmer at the end of the tunnel that you look for as a Falco player. You're like, man, I got shined again. Man, I got needled off stage. But that combo I hit second stock was kind of nice, though. Combo. That combo I hit was kind of nice, moving. though. And so that you're never going to stop chasing that high. And we if you ask me, he's like fourth or fifth. Yeah. I like that. Wills? When your 2 2 or Falco stop making combo videos, the game's dead. <laughs> I, I think. Like I think as soon as your 2-2 two, two or Falco stops thinking the shit he hit at 2 a.m. on his best friend was cool, then Melee will probably have died. That's we, need, kinda... we cannot ask them to switch off Falco because they could, they could never be any, any other way. I just don't want them to be consumed by it. Tapo? It's hard to wait for that. Um, there was an old saying in old school Smash where... You... Every Falco becomes a hero, they live long enough to become the fox. So you have to beat them so badly that they pay fox. You have and to then, let them fly so that they fall. Yes. Okay, I hear you. KK, final thoughts? I have Falco's a fifth, back. and his biggest problem is that he doesn't do anything in the meta. Oh, so, yes. so long ago, like back in 2015, I'd argue that Falco actually beat fox by record like pretty badly. Um, but it's been a long time since he's done that. Um, so really, he does, his main job was that even though Fox is better versus the floaties and ice climbers and yada, 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 Falco still had the edge on the most common tournament character, which made him really a force to be reckoned with. But he doesn't do that anymore. So now he just kind of occupies the same niche as like Sheik, except he doesn't beat Marth. So what does he do? What does he offer oh. you? That's the problem. For him to like, if he wants to like have a role in the meta again, he has to either figure out how to beat Fox or figure out a new niche. But right now, the problem is Sheik at least deals with Marth and the Pikachus and the things that emerge to like deal with those problems. Marth deals with Fox, and then you have Jigglypuff that kind of deals with the miscellaneous stuff like Sheik and Pikachu and stuff when it comes up. So you have this like rotation between the three of them. But Falco doesn't fit in anywhere. Neither does Falcon. That's why they're worse. You're spitting beautifully. Uh, that that's 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 pretty much the problem as I'm seeing it too. But I, I don't know how to reach them. They they're all delusional. So I guess that that's all we can do is wait long enough until they they see the light. Maybe they they hear your words, KK, and you and you can break through to them. Uh, we are to left me. with the crazy like what? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Uh, we're gonna move on to our tiebreaker. The way a tiebreaker works for those of you who are new to the show is uh, you can still throw the game. KK is ahead pretty pretty solidly. Uh, but even poor Tafo at 23 points can come back here if you do really well and if KK throws it. Uh, and for not Mitch and Wills, same story. You're a little bit of a smaller gap. So let's set up this tiebreaker. Don't talk about my gaps on public forums. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what can I say? You're at an airport. You're IRL streaming. You only drink on public transportation. A police officer approaches you. He thinks you're acting strange. I'm your dungeon master. I've got a D20 here to roll for you. What do you do next as the police officer approaches you? I'm getting all my bars ready to rip into that old, old Kaji son of a gun because we're mm -hmm. battle rapping in LaGuardia. I don't care. Okay. You're going for a charisma check. Let me you know see. I got that shit. You did roll a natural 20 on the charisma check. You succeed in your rap battle. Uh, the cop is humiliated in front of everybody. It's, it's horrible. <laughs> I see why uh, you don't want me on the show. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's going to quit the force. He's, uh, he's finally ready to hang it up. He, he realizes the error of his ways. Who's next? KK, what do roll you for, do? Roll for seduction. Ooh. You want to roll for seduction? Okay. We're going to try to seduce the police officer. This is not far from. Yeah, maybe why not? The cop. <laughs> All right. You roll 15. It's enough to pique his interest. What do you say? Is there a problem, officer? <laughs> he thinks you're acting strange. You've been IRL streaming and, uh, you know, people walking around the airport talking to their phone happened. loudly and strangely is, is really weird. 
I am just acting the same way with them as I am with you. Is there a problem, officer? Like, what's wrong? Is everything good? Like, this is, again, I'm just being friendly. Okay, let me see your second roll. He's not impressed. He's not okay. impressed. You got one more chance to save it. Mm, I mean, what is his reaction? If he's not impressed, what's he doing right now? He's asking you uh, if you could turn off your stream. Honestly, I'd probably just do it. <laughs> okay, you point. turn off the stream. Resolve the situation. Tapo, yeah. what are you doing? I see my cute baby. Oh. Uh, okay, I roll for if he thinks the baby is cute. It's a five. He uh, he thinks the baby is about as normal as ever, but you still shouldn't be walking around the airport with your phone out. He's he's asking you what the heck is going on. Are you trying to record your baby for strangers on the internet? Yeah. Okay, let's see. That works on him. He just shrugs and walks away. Yes. All right, Wills. <laughs> okay, panicking, I reach out and try to slip my illicit substances into the officer's pockets before he asks for a search. All right, you're going for a sleight of hand? Yeah. What's your dexterity modifier? Plus two. Plus two, okay. One sec. Sorry, I fell off the table. Come on, come on, come on. I fell off the table again. I'm rolling it. I have directly. inspiration. Oh, okay, fine. You have what you get. You rolled up. You rolled up. You got a six, which isn't high enough. Do you want to reroll? Yeah, I'm using inspo. Okay. Come on, come on, come on. You managed to plant the drugs. What do you do next? Okay, okay. I I now try and dap up the officer, bumping into him and trying to jostle the drugs back out of his pocket onto the floor. All right, this is going to be a little bit difficult. You're going to need a pretty high roll. He's going to 20 this. So I feel it. You get a 10. You do jostle him, but he notices oh. that your hand has still a little bit of the drugs on it. It's not going to go well from there. So we're going to cut that off and say no, KK no, no. is the winner of this episode of Four Side Fights. I'm going to still give it to him. Mitch, you played incredible there, but KK did just pass in just enough of the rolls to keep him in the lead. That is our game. We're going to take the three losers to four side as they do a free-for-all to see how their punditry translates to melee. Stick with us as we get that set up. Wait, who's who? Okay, so who's who? I know Tafo's chic. Okay, that's good. That makes sense. And then... You know, they're fighting on the on a, the UFO, but now they're not. What is going... So Samus is just kind of like looking for her spots very carefully and now getting infinited. And <laughs> Tafo is just like vibing. Let's go. I'm gonna infinite him. Actually, I don't want to be here. <laughs> I feel like yeah, whoever gets sandwiched on like the Empire State Building no, is going to be not. the person who gets like bodied. So they probably want to avoid being that person. But how will they do it? Because there's just you've got that Tafo element. They don't know that. No one can predict what he's going to do because he can't predict what he's going to do. Mm. Dude, he's, I have a baby. Powered by that... a baby and willpower. Oh no! <laughs> okay, it's time to lock the fuck in. Okay, we've got Get it together, in. Mitch. KK, do you got anything to uh to, to shill for the audience? This is your uh this is your platform now. Oh, uh follow my YouTube. I'm at KirbyFuzzy7726. All the coaching stuff goes up there if it does. Um and then which would be same thing, I think. KirbyKazi7726. And yeah, Twitter is at KirbyKazi underscore. Usually I post funny nest clips there. If you like seeing Ooh. Peaches die to a bee, then go there. It's very funny. Um, yeah. And then that's. Don't you I'm have doing. your SDI guide? How to get out of Fox up here? You know, that disappeared one day and I just cannot find it. It's crazy. I. <laughs> And nobody knows where it went. I'll have to make a new one, won't I? Probably with new characters. That will not be as offensive. <laughs> uh, let's go, Sheik. I do think I'm going to keep Demo Kirby, though. Demo Kirby's iconic, but I think that Fox needs to change. What would you do with Fox, Tapo? With Fox? What do you mean? Well, there was like the... He was evil. So... But I don't know if he's evil so much as misunderstood. Like, we misunderstand how powerful he is. And perhaps he should be banned. <laughs> um, no. Fox is evil in the sense that oh, it's no. like, the, why don't you do... Fox is the modern, like, why don't you code? 
I feel like kind no, of. Chill on me, of. what? Kind of. I feel like Fox is characterized by his ability to do anything in any spot, though. Like, he always has offense and defense in any position he's in, which is kind of what. Hey, I like a person. Well, I guess coding has nerf, has been oversaturated. But I feel like a person with a tech degree, like five years ago, at the world. <laughs> Maybe he's just a billionaire. Have we considered he might be. that? <laughs> like Fox is just like a billionaire. Um, and now, and now the latest yacht is like having a box notch controller, Mitch, right? Mitch, That's what the billionaires show off their one billion dollar box co controllers. So the part I'm waiting for is when like the, the two like more active players realize that Taffa was just running away from them yeah, and wanted I, them kill I, each I, other. <laughs> where's where's the class solidarity? I definitely yeah, kiss Taffa like off the I play Nest now. Like, like, <laughs> what? Oh me. <laughs> What are you doing for the team right now? <laughs> Not a damn thing, but talking. Can we get this stock, Mitch? T tell me about Ness. Is Ness cool? I think Ness is so no, cool. No, chill, chill. He's looking at two. Why do you not think Ness is cool? I thought we were I was just wondering what you think. I think Ness is pretty cool, but it's very frustrating to play him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's about accurate. Oh! That was pretty oh, nasty. Wow. See, now we're like back to even stocks. So I think like the pur the purple character and the orange character are going to fight each other now. Yeah. But see, would they have done that? Would they have changed their targets had I not said that? That's I was already question. trying to change targets. <laughs> I was You're manipulating strong. reality. <laughs> I just I like to think of myself <gasps> as someone who Okay, Mitch. Has oh, how the terrible chain. He's just trying to like, you know, do whatever he oh, does. Oh, Control the meta. <laughs> All right, the winner is Wills. Wills Let's is the Will. new Samus. <laughs> the young Samus is the winner of the fight on four side. Congratulations young to Mitchell. KK for winning four side I'm fights. To Wills for winning the fight on four side. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this shorter episode. We'll see if we do more of this experiment going forward. Thank you all for being here. Bye. 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 <laughs>